morning. Here we are, another day on the uh, beautiful Loch Urn. We're on the upper lock at this point. It's actually a really, really nice day. The wind is, the wind is all right, I guess. But it's given it to be a nice kind of sort of a almost sunny day. Temperatures are going to be tropical. They're going to be like nine degrees. Might have to strip down to the togs and you know get a suntan. Got four rods in. It's just kind of it's about nine o'clock. So let's have a let's have a go with today and let's see what we can catch, eh? Starting from there, whole mackerel that's cast just out into there, it's about seven feet deep there. Smelt, uh, not a very big smelt, I would say hi. That's chucked out straight in front of us, moving along. We have on this road a pollen, on this road a popped up perch. The wind is coming straight into our faces here so not ideal normally it fishes better when the wind's going that way because I can put a drifted float on the far bank is the deeper stretch this is the shallower bit so I'm kind of hoping I might be too early yet oh. we're on one of these floating jetties so any sort of fucking movement sends the drop arms off I'm hoping that maybe the pike are starting to move to To shallower bays, we're getting to that time of year, the end of February, start of March. We're on the upper lock, so we're not getting, we're not having the people that's doing the netting. Their season thankfully runs out on the end of February. So they've had their three months to cull and ruin the system. Thank you, Dira and all the rest of the powers that be but let's get a cup of coffee on the go and we'll see what we can do today like I said it's going to be a cracking day it's going to be like 9, nine or 10 degrees so it should be good I'm not fishing by myself today I'm escorted so there's a few of us which is good That's the problem of fishing on these floating jetties. In the rough weather, the damn jetty kind of rocks and rolls like this in the rough weather. All that's really anchoring it down is that big black pole. They build these so the boat people can moor on them in the summer when they're doing boating. But. Like I said, let's get a cup of coffee on the go and we will have a go at the rest of the day. Just then. And we're in. Feels all right, this one. Should I bring me that net over, buddy? Nah, it's not that big, but it's a fish. Ah, 
and we are off the mark. We are off the mark. Right, let me get this dress unhooked. No, no, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright, it's okay. It's alright. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, just He's managed to to break the smelt in half, but he's done it. And there we go. There's, there's half the smelt. I don't know how many. He must have hit it that hard. He snapped it in two. And now he wants to eat my net. Maybe just a little jack. Get it put back in. Oh. There he's away. If that gets us off the mark anyway. Ah, look at that for a nice sunny day. I might even have to break out the sunglasses. Although, being serious, the wind is actually quite so sore on you when you're out there in that jetty. So, we are off the mark. A little tiny smelt, and I don't know how he managed to snap it in two, but he managed to snap it in two. It's what I'm expecting in this bay at the minute. Because we're coming to the end of February, I'm expecting the fish to kind of realise that it's time now to go and get a nice uh, spawning bay. So you'll find that there's places that not deep water but not too shallow anything about you know between 10 to 7 feet, 7 to 10 feet. Sort of perfect because the sunlight it radiates through the water, it heats up the water column a little bit faster and the fish will move into the nice reed lined bays and think this is a good spot to pass on the next generation of pike, so this is what we're going to do. And the little jacks follow the big pike in. Now sometimes that can be a good thing. The little pike can get the, the old horizontal Olympics. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. The little pike could be dinner. That's why at certain times of the year, pike will happily cannibalize each other. So certain times of the year, don't be afraid to use big bits. Don't even be afraid to use a, a jack pike as a bit. Some of the best pike I've caught have been on jack pike bits. You used to be able to get them. I can't remember where I actually bought them. I think I got them off of loose bits from Neville Ficklin. So I don't know where Neville gets them from. However, it's a nice morning. The sun is out. The birds are worse. The birds are chirping, and we're off the mark. Just did another, another few of them. Hopefully, cross the fingers for me. Not being greedy, 
I'd happily settle for a mid-20. <laughs> Let's make that cup of coffee, eh? Yeah? Gonna give the uh, bait some oil. Come up for this perch. Give it some uh, milk or something. Give it some sardine oil. So weed. I'm trying out my uh, my lead links. I showed you in the last video. Like I said, and now you're into your that's your weak bit. Get some juice into our onto our wee perch here. Gonna put this one full of sardine oil.
that's a bit of oil put in them. I get asked quite a lot about the oil that I use. I'll use any type of oil, you know, I'll use, I'll try it all. But the oil that I found that it was the best oil that I liked was from Eddie Turner. Now I know I've said Eddie Turner oil before a lot of times, but it's the I found it to be the best. It's like their their mackerel, smoky mackerel, the eel smelt. Jesus, brilliant stuff, excellent stuff. A link to his places in the description, the description below. And while we're talking about tackle, I was speaking to Pete Foster, the guy that makes the drop arms that I'm using. Uh, Pete has now completely sold out of his drop arms. He has none left. So, well done Pete for making a product that's been so successful. So, unfortunately, uh, the drop arms have all sold out. But, I'm sure eventually he'll, get, he'll start making more of them. But at the minute they've all sold out. Uh, Pete's working on a new design of alarm specifically for pike anglers and from the prototypes that I've seen it looks very very good so when that's ready for for market I'll be getting some of those from Pete uh, and I'll be road testing those but let's face it the man is a pike angling genius when it comes up with stuff like this here you know the man is a pike angling genius very very talented guy who can think of all this stuff and in his head he can think it and then go away with the skills to build it and make it so a pike a pike anglers I'm getting a bit of a see that's the, the problem when you're fishing with braid braided line unfortunately it takes a while for the water to get into it so it tends to stay higher in the water column so there's always a bit of an arch from your lead to your rod and over time that arch kind of settles down again it settles into the water and this is why you want a heavy drop back so the drop back will pull that tension out of the line so if you see your drop back sit tight to the rail like this and then it starts over time to pull it down like that there that's the rod, that's the, the drop arm doing its job. It's taking the, uh, the slack line out of the rod, out of the, the between rod and bait, it's taking the slack line away. So you just have to watch out for it and then amend as necessary, so to speak. I still haven't got my cup of coffee yet. So I'm gonna go back and make my cup of coffee. It's a bit nippy with the old wind. I'm not sure how good this microphone if it's catching it. But as you can see, we're fishing in a, a really beautiful place. That's one thing we're spoiled for here in Northern Ireland is natural beauty. And pubs. I miss pubs. I miss going out and having a drink. I can't be the only one that's missing them. One hour later. It's just going 10 to 3. It's alright. Not blanking. Well, I'm not blanking. Sid's blanking. I'm waiting for him to start crying about blanking. <laughs> but, 10 to 3. The wind's kind of getting a bit stronger. But, it's nothing to be worried about. It's not 50 miles an hour. And whipping rain into you like so oh that's not a bad day I changed up the bits put out a, a big roach a lot of big roach roach you know so there's a roach a pollen a big trout and I can't remember what else is it. Oh, it's a smelt. Uh, maxi smelt, bigger smelt. So, they've all been suitably well juiced up and injected with oils. And 
unfortunately the wind's kind of hitting us right in their face so the oils wouldn't really be drifting anywhere other than to our feet but it's it doesn't hurt it doesn't harm anything with the old the old oils it's quite a popular spot this place there's been umpteen cars come down to where we're parked look at us stare at us for a bit and turn around and go home I don't know why Yep, Sid scared them off. Looking in the news, I had a laugh. Coca-Cola has apparently ordered its staff to act less white. Whatever the hell that means. They actually put out like PDF files and stuff and sent them to all their employees saying that they're not to act white. That made me laugh. You know, uh, replace white with, you know, don't act black or don't act Muslim or don't act Jewish or, or anything else. And there would have been like a shitstorm of epic proportions, but it's fine to say don't act white. <laughs> Another company lost to woke bullshit. But... these it's all somebody has to stand up to these lunatics you know these extremists I don't answer the phone by saying hello as a pike angler you know I don't rush to tell people the first thing they see when they meet me is as a pike angler or a fisherman or as an atheist or as a sports fan or as a, a person who eats curry and drinks beer so I don't understand these crazy people that the first thing out of their mouth when you meet them is As a gay person, I think such and such I don't get that If your whole life revolves around one thing Then I think you're a bit of a supremacist Or an extremist Either way, it's not healthy You know If you're one of these people that say as a insert buzzword then perhaps take a walk have a look in the mirror stop and smell the roses life's huge you don't have to pigeonhole yourself into as a whatever category of victim that you want to pretend to be that week I watched the thing that was sent to me uh, it was homosexual people how they view going to a football match I quite like football. I've supported Glasgow Rangers all my life. Never in my life when I've gone to watch Rangers at Ibrox where they play or following them around Europe or Scotland, I have never heard any Rangers fan berate another fan for being homosexual. It just doesn't happen. It's like I never heard any Rangers fan berate anybody on their skin colour. You know, it, it just doesn't happen. In fact, I would go so far as to say, if I was at Ibrox and I seen somebody berating somebody for their skin colour, then I'd probably punch them in the back of the head and say, stop being a dickhead, sit down. Doesn't happen. So this video kind of pipes on, and of course, the first person they bring up has the dim head and the purple glasses, has the big earrings, has a tea cosy, it's looking like a, a trendier version of Mrs. Brown and saying, as a gay person, I don't like going to football matches because I don't feel at home. How do you answer that? Don't fucking go. Don't tell people that you're gay. Life is bigger than just being a sexual person that's into men or women or whatever. You know, nobody at a football match, I mean, Ibrox holds 50 something thousand seats. I guarantee you, nobody at Ibrox will know that you're a homosexual. Nobody cares. Do you know what they're there for? They're there to watch football. They're there for 90 minutes of footballing action and then sing a few songs, have a bit of a laugh, hopefully go home after getting three points and a win. 
and life goes on until the next match. It's the the the, uh, the clamber to be a victim. I don't understand in modern society. Don't understand that at all. And the more I kind of speak out about it, the more people kind of tell me to shut up. Can't say that. Oh, can't speak like that. You'll get banned off Twitter for hate speeching. I have a theory. If everyone's kind of stood up and said to these crazy people that demand we pay attention to them as they stamp their feet, if we all kind of stood up and said, no, we're not taking it anymore, we're tired of your shit, grow up, it would go away like that. You know, of course, by simply saying this, people are going to say to me, well, you're clearly a racist, or a super Hitler, or a Nazi, or a fucking something else. I get that all the time too. And it's funny, the last time I got it on, uh, on one of the social media platforms, it was a friend of mine that I worked with for years, that kind of popped up and posted a photograph of me and him drunk as hell, partying in uh, Lincoln City. You know, you can't miss him, he's like six foot eight, and he is Nigerian. Well, his grandparents were Nigerian. He's English. You know, he is built like the side of a door. He is huge. And that shouldn't have to be like that. People shouldn't have to step in and say, well, he's not a racist, trust me. He doesn't hate gays. I think it's about time the uh, woke shit stirrers of the world uh, fucked off and left us all in peace. Another cup of coffee time, and then we'll change out the bits. Two hours later. Well, that's time, I think, to go home. There we go. I'm going to save this trout and use it on another session, I think. Set that down, unscrew these back sticks.
hiking to do. It's better than a blank, I guess. Still, it's a day out. Caught fish. Didn't get soaked in the rain. Always a bonus here in Northern Ireland. So yeah. Until the next time troops. Tight lines.